Hi everyone, welcome to this module on a quick VPN Connect demo. As we saw in the previous module, let me just bring up the setup here. We have an on-premises setup with an address space of 10.0.0.0 slash 16. We have an on-prem, uh, we have an OCI setup with a VCN address space of 172.0.0.0 slash 16. And we will create a DRG, we'll update the route table, we'll change some of these, uh, we'll change some of these network security groups here, or the security list here, and then we'll create a static route here, IPsec tunnels, and we'll show all this uh, working uh, by by concluding that IPsec tunnels are in an up state, it's up and running, uh, right? So let's go ahead and do this setup. Now, just for this setup, uh, I am running this whole on-prem side of the world in AWS. So I'm going to skip that part. I have a LibreSwan uh, VM, which I am, which I have installed in the AWS environment uh, and I've uh, configured the software, etc. So I'm going to skip it. But if you guys want to follow, there is documentation right here. So if you follow this documentation uh, and you scroll down, uh, it shows you uh, setting up um, LibreSwan and uh, uh, you can you you can follow some of this um, uh, configuration here uh, to to make sure that uh, your environment is is the the environment you are running the on-prem environment uh, has all the requisite uh, parameters etc. Right. So let me just quickly show you uh, the things you have to do uh, as the workflow. We we had like this seven-step workflow uh, in creating the VPN connect. So let me just quickly go ahead and and show that. So first thing I'm going to do is I I need a virtual cloud network on the OCI side, right? So I'll say this is my uh, VPN uh, or my VPN connect demo. So we'll call it VCN connect. And right here, I'll just create my uh, VCN and have will will create some subnets, etc. Later on. So uh, right here, I can create my VCN and the address space I'm using is 172.0.0.0/16. .0 Let's go ahead create one subnet. Uh, though I'm not going to spin up uh, any instance in here, uh, but that's fine. Let me just quickly go ahead and create a subnet. I'm going to use the default route table and I'm going to use the default uh, security list, right? That's fine. And because it's, you know, I'm going to uh, access it to my on prem environment, let me make it a private subnet, right? Uh, and click create here. And now is created right so plain simple uh, vcn has one subnet i am using the default route table the default security list so a couple of things i need to do is uh, for this demo to work i have to open certain ports uh, for my um, for my vpn uh, connect uh, to work right so for tcp i need port 4500 and i need port 500 and i need to do the same thing for UDP. All right. So my my ingress rules we just change. Nothing nothing complex. Uh, we just change uh, TCP. We open port 4500. Uh, TCP again. We open port 500. And UDP we open for 4500 and we need to open 500 there. So let me just edit here. I just said all there. All right, so pretty straightforward, right? So we created um, the we changed the security list. Now let me go ahead here and as you can see, there is no. Uh, if I click on dynamic routing gateway, you can see that there is no DRG available here, right? So let's go ahead and create a DRG. Uh, it takes uh, quite around a minute or so, sometimes less. Uh, to create so it is going on in the background as the DRG is getting created. Let me go ahead and create a CPE So CPE, if you recall is the uh, is the virtual representation of your actual on-premises uh, Equipment network device running your on-premises environment, right? So I need a public IP here now Like I said, I'm running this in my AWS environment and this is the public IP. I have uh, 3.2 3.0.163.217. This is my um, public IP of the LibreSwan uh, VM, which is running in AWS. So let me just grab that and uh, put that public IP here because I would need that and create a CP. 
and now my uh, virtual representation of that network device is created in uh, OCI right here. If I see DRG, my DRG is up and running. So it took less than less than a minute. Now you can see here, first thing I need to do is I need to attach it to a virtual cloud network. So right now it says it's not attached to any VCN, right? So the VCN we just created, uh, let's just attach it there. So VCN connect. So just say attach to virtual cloud network. Remember they have one-to-one -one relationship. So now it's getting attached here, right? So next thing I also need to do is I need to create my IPsec connections. So if you click on IPsec within your DRG, it says go to the IPsec on, on the menu here. So this is my networking menu, bunch of things we have already looked, right? So there is IPsec connections here. Right now I can see I have no IPsec connection, right? So let's go ahead and change and, and create one. The first thing says, okay, which compartment are you planning to use? And you have to be careful because it chooses like the root compartment. So choose the compartment, training compartment. All my assets are running here. So I would just choose that. Uh, it's asking to provide a name. I'm really bad at naming. So I'll say IPsec1. Then it says, where are my, where is my CPE? We just created this CPE uh, a few uh, moments back. So let's use that. And then it says, where is my DRG? We just created this DRG, right? And now it's asking for a static route. Uh, I could have used uh, a dynamic routing as well. Uh, so right now, just to keep the demo simple, I'll use my static route here. But if you click on advanced options here, you can see that uh, there are there you, you could actually pick uh, BGP routing as well, right? And it's a new feature. And you could pick up your I, IKE version. So IKE V1 or V2. And again, some of these complex things we talk about in the level 200 module. But I could have chosen uh, a dynamic routing here as well, right? I'm going with static. That's fine. Let me just make sure that this is the static route I have. Uh, this is my AWS VPC CIDR 10.0.0.0 slash 16, right? That's my static route, right? And I click here and my IPsec connections would now be created. Now, <clears throat> this this takes literally uh, like a minute or so. Uh, and my uh, my my connection would be would be uh, would be uh, you would see this is a change to a provision state. Now a couple of things to note here, right? Uh, I'm using static routing which we just provided. Uh, you can see that uh, my public IP, the tunnel has public IP, right? First thing is we create two tunnels, right? You see tunnel one and you see tunnel two. Then you can see that the tunnel has a public IP address here, right? 129.213.7.49 and 129.213.6.52, right? So the two different uh, public IP addresses. And um, the IPsec status is down, of course, because we have not set up the Libreson uh, uh, end uh, and we have not done all the configuration and it's in the provisioning state right now, right? So if I click on this tunnel, I can see my shared secret here, right? Uh, and it's showing me the, the shared secret, which we will be using for our configuration. So as this is getting configured, let me go ahead and make these changes to my LibreSwan uh, VM, which is running on the AWS environment, right? The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the, the IP address here, and I'm already logged into my uh, my uh, LibreSwan VM, which is running in, in AWS. And you can see here I'm logged in, I'm using a CentOS um, uh, environment to, to run my, my LibreSwan, et cetera, right? So I'm logged in here. If I just do my directory, I, right now I'm in the ETC directory, right? So let me uh, bring up, couple of files we are going to use for our demo, right? So the first file which we are going to use is the IPsec config file. And if you can see here, it has certain parameters which I was testing earlier. So there is a connection here, we're calling connection OCI1. And you can see some parameters. Uh, there is the OCI um, uh, uh, public IP address for one of the tunnels, right? So it's right here. Uh, and then there is uh, the OCI VCN CIDR uh, range. Uh, so you can see that here. Uh, and then the three parameters down below are all related to AWS. So this is my uh, local VPC I'm using in, in AWS environment. This is the public IP uh, of the LibreSwan VM. Uh, and then this is my AWS VPC CIDR, right? So pretty straightforward. Let me just go ahead and make changes to this file. So the only thing which we need to change here looks like is the public IP for my, uh, for my, uh, uh, for my tunnels right so this is my drg ip sec public ip and uh, public ip uh, for the tunnels and if i see i have 129.213.7.49 instead of 59 right so let me just go ahead and make this change here 49 right here also 
to the same thing, 49. My uh, OCI VCN CIDR is the same. My AWS side is the same. My AWS public IP is the same. Uh, and then my um, uh, AWS VPC CIDR is the range is the same, right? So none of those parameters change. So I went ahead and I saved my uh, file. And if I see the change, I can see that uh, the, the IP address right now is, uh, is changed here, right? So there is one more file which we need to uh, change. And if I see my ipsec.secrets file, it's it's pretty straightforward, right? There, I just have one entry for my uh, OCI tunnel public IP, uh, one of the tunnels. I have the public IP of the Libreson VM. And then right here, I have the shared secret. So let's go ahead and change uh, this file as well. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my IP here. So it's 49. And then right here is this shared secret. It's going to be the shared secret coming from my tunnel. Let me just delete this whole thing. And go back to my tunnel. Grab this whole thing here, copy it. All right. So I got my secret uh, uh, secrets file um, uh, updated, and now my configuration is almost done. Uh, I could restart. I could say IPsec verify, uh, and I could restart my. Uh, and you can see some of these uh, things are uh, says um, uh, enable sudo service IPsec restart. And I could restart my service. I could verify IPsec again, and I see a bunch of these things are 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 okay, right? If it, there was an error, it would have given me an error here. Uh, the thing is, the the tunnels are still being provisioned. If I go back here, I can see the tunnels are still being provisioned. So let me pause the video uh, for a couple of minutes. It takes a few minutes to provision these tunnels, and once the tunnel is provisioned, you would see that the state would change from a down state. To an up state at least for one of the tunnels because we just configured that that particular uh, tunnel so let me just pause the video here and come back once the tunnels are uh, when, uh, uh, tunnels are provisioned all right so looks like my tunnels are up and running so it takes literally a few minutes and uh, you can see the state here uh, for both the tunnel the ipsec status uh, shows as down now, one thing which we didn't do earlier when we were running these, uh, uh, running the demo, is we didn't really create, uh, change the route table entries. So if I come back to my VCN which we created, uh, we have we changed the security list, uh, but we really didn't change uh, add anything in the route table. So you can see that we have a default route table and there is no entry in here. So the packets have no way uh, to go to the DRG, right? So let's go ahead and change that. So I can pick my DRG here, and my destination is my AWS environment, and I can just add this particular uh, rule here, right? So let's do that. And then, uh, as we said, in, uh, as we did in the previous, uh, uh, before uh, the, the tunnels were getting provisioned, let's go ahead and restart my uh, IPsec, just to make sure that, <coughs> clear my screen, and restart the IPsec uh, service. So we did that, and then let's do sudo ipsec auto status grip. And you can see there that my route is visible, right? So uh, it, it shows the tunnels were created uh, uh, Correctly, and you can see that this is my uh, this this shows the the tunnel going from uh, my um, uh, the, the the AWS VCN CIDR, the AWS public IP going to the uh, to the OCI uh, tunnel here, right? 129.213.7.49, right? So uh, the tunnel seems to have been created correctly. If I go back to my uh, DRG or my IPsec connections. My connection would be up in uh, in a in a few seconds. So let me again pause uh, the video. It takes sometimes it takes a minute or two, uh, and once it's up up and running, uh, we'll uh, we'll we'll come back. 
All right, so that took uh, a minute or so. And as you can see now, my tunnel IPsec status says up, which means that my tunnel is up and running. Now, if I had um, an instance running inside that subnet, I could have pinged my Libris on VM and vice versa to show you the connectivity. But you can see the IPsec status up here. Uh, and basically what it means is the tunnel has been established between the, the on-premises CP device, which is the Libris on VM running in AWS and my uh, OCI uh, DRG, uh, uh, the, the two tunnels I have, right? And right here, you can see some of the matrix. Uh, um, I can do this in like less than a minute and there's no data here, but you can see the tunnel state, packets with errors, etc. cetera, right? A um, couple of things I want to quickly show here is I just configured one tunnel. Uh, if you recall, if I go back to my, if I go back to my uh, Libreson VM configuration and uh, bring up the IPsec configuration file, I just have one tunnel uh, configured here, right? Uh, if I had both tunnels configured, you would see both tunnels up and running. One tunnel is down because I just configured one. Uh, so uh, it's really straightforward. This is this took literally 15 minutes or so. Um, this is good uh, an easy way for you to test uh, and start with a POC environment and then for more complex scenarios, uh, switch over to Fast Connect. So I hope this was useful uh, demo. Uh, thank you for watching this demo. In the next module, we'll talk about Fast Connect. Thank you.